yesterday's confession featured, you might remember, you can always uh, check it again uh, on the radio player thing, uh, featured a disgraceful couple of uh, tykes really, using some topsoil to cover a bowling green in fake molehills because they thought, thought it was jolly wheeze and have since repented of their ways. Anyway, it caused this bowling club uh, to forfeit a crucial match. Uh, and in the world of bowls, this is uh, you know, much outrage, obviously, and it is fair to say it's got a fairly genteel image. Whether that image is fair or not, we will check it out with John Crowther, who's the chief executive of the British Crown Green Bowling Association. Hello, John. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, would you agree that uh, the world of bowls has a kind of a genteel reputation? Uh, that's probably true. Uh, it has the uh, reputation of being a sport for old people and a rather cloth cap image, but we're trying to dispel both of those images because it is definitely a sport for all ages and for people from all backgrounds. So, um, you, we ought to sort of specify at this point that there are, n there are a number of different types of bowls, so just explain what's happening there, John. Uh, there are, Simon, yeah. My responsibility is for the sport of crown green bowls, right. as you said in the introduction. Crown green bowls is a very, very popular sport, but played north of, sort of, Nuneaton, Coventry, all the northern counties, Cheshire, Cumbria, Manchester, Lancashire, Yorkshire, Merseyside, where I live, uh, hundreds of thousands of people play it and enjoy it uh, most evenings of the week from about March until September, October time. Okay, uh, so... It's a great family sport. And how, so how does Crown Green Bowls differ from the other types? As the name suggests, some, many of the greens do have a sort of raised crown, as the name would suggest. Not all of them. And the main, or one of the main differences is that in Crown Green Bowls, the players can play anywhere on the green. You have a mat or a footer, as people call it. You send out the, the jack, the small bowl, which has to travel a minimum of 19 meters to set what is called a mark. So that can travel anywhere on the green. Uh, it, it can go 100 yards, 100 meters, or 20 or 30 meters. But in flat green, they play up um, a rink, almost, they go up the same area uh, throughout their game. Right. That, that's one of the main differences. Is it related in any way, John, to the French game of boule? Not, not really, no. I did play a little bit. I, when I was a student uh, in France many moons ago, I did play the sport of boule, but I don't think there is a, any really close uh, connection. So it's just because they have the small, you know, jack ball and then you just uh, have... They have that, they, yeah. they toss that in the air, and uh, it's a very fascinating sport, which, as I say, I did enjoy playing a little bit and watching a great deal in my student days many moons ago. And presumably, just from the way you're describing it, men can play women, old can play young, it must be one of the few sports where that can happen. That's correct. Um, we, a few years ago, we opened, it's a uh, no age limit, either minimum age, maximum age. Uh, I'm nearing uh, pension age. My grandson is 13. He plays competitively, he played last evening. My daughter's in her mid-thirties. She's one of the top lady bowlers. And my wife, who's sh slightly younger than me, has played over a hundred times for her county team. So it's a fantastic family sport. A great social sport, and people of all abilities, as you say, men can play ladies, people of 15 can play somebody in their 80s, and it really is a fantastic sport what, I what, recommend to what, anyone. And what makes a great bowls player, John? Well, I wish we knew that. Um, at the moment, we have two, two gentlemen in the, in the gentleman's game, two gentlemen, one called Gary Ellis from Greater Manchester, and one called Graham Wilson, who plays for Yorkshire, both about the same age, uh, coincidentally. They're recognised as the two best competition players. There are a lot of good, uh, other good players. Why those two are that much better than the rest of us is very difficult to say. But uh, the good thing is that on our day, we can all beat each other, because uh, I don't think Gary Ellis, if he was listening, would mind me saying... The other day, he played another top bowler and lost 21-2. Wow. So that can happen to the best. And can you be a professional? Well, they, they are... Uh, depends what you call professional. They do receive uh, prize monies. They, they pay money to enter competitions and various amounts of prize monies 
I'll, I'll, I'll offer. So what can, what can you win, John? What's the highest, you know, the biggest prize you can win in Crown? Uh, I recently returned from a, a marvellous festival in the Isle of Man. And, in fact, one of the two I've just mentioned, Graham Wilson, lost 21-20 in the final to an up-and-coming youngster called Jack Hargreaves from Greater Manchester. Yeah. And the winner won the current biggest prize in the sport yeah. of three thousand pounds. Three thousand pounds, well, that's a lot of money. Okay. Uh, yeah. Probably one of us has a thousand pounds top prize. John, we so, appreciate you speaking to us. Thank you very much indeed for explaining thank you very much indeed. everything about Crown Green Bowls. Uh, and can I just mention one thing? Uh, if uh, under very ten quickly, seconds, yes. Uh, we have a website called www.crowngreenbowls.org. Nice. Anyone interested? Please get on there. John Crowther, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.